Hi, I'm Kim Searle. You're here to the Learning Mind podcast. Welcome. And today I've got with me Rob Donnelly, somebody I met many years ago. Rob, hello. How are you? Hi, Kim. Hello. I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. Excellent. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, it's great to be here. And yeah, so obviously my name's Rob. I run a business called Rob Donnelly Therapy. Uh I suppose a lot of people see me as a cognitive hypnotherapist. Um, I'm a therapist, hypnotherapist and coach. I live in the attachment area, but I work both face-to-face online. I specialize in helping people with anxiety and addiction. That's that's pretty much me, Kim. Yeah, and, and certainly on the anxiety front, I don't know very much about addiction. I never specialized in that when I was doing cognitive hypnotherapy. But the, the, the anxiety is rife right now because of the whole Brexit thing. And then we've gone into COVID and then obviously all the state of the world. So I think it's very heightened right now, isn't it? It certainly is. I don't, I don't think people have really come down from COVID. I think... Uh, Obviously, we all know the what, what the way we had to live, the way we had to adopt our lifestyles during COVID, really raised the levels of anxiety, uh, and I think them levels are still around today. I think we're still seeing the backlash of COVID, and um, and also it's it seems to be very much a buzzword, doesn't it? That um, the people like to uh, to but they'll they'll use to say my anxiety causes me to do this, my anxiety causes me to do that, yeah. sort of thing. It is, and um, I think probably a conversation for another time but anxiety has different meanings for many different people because I used to call it stress hello (laughs) so one of the things I wanted to ask you uh, Rob particularly today with the nature of the work is that you know many people get stuck don't they and that's the symptom of a fixed mindset what do you think is going on there yeah, it's interesting. When you asked me to come on, uh, I did. I must admit, I did put some thought into this. And um, when we when we're born, and I'm not sure if you can see this diagram. Can I hold this diagram? Yes. Off? Yep. So if you have a, have a quick look at this diagram, obviously yes. we're born. We're actually born with a complete vanilla mind. So babies don't have anything at all. They're, they're completely empty. Yes. And as we go along our life's journey. That, that mind is populated with all the input from teachers, uh, from friends, from family, mm. from from just about everyone. And that's, for me, causes people to adopt a certain identity. And sometimes that identity could be massively negative, really. Um, and very much you'll hear people say, you know, I can't play football, I can't write poetry. And that's usually to do with some sort of... Uh, limiting belief and people will get stuck in a fixed mindset because because of the identity they've taken on based on what's happened in their life in the past if that makes sense that does and and it's really interesting that you say that I hadn't even though I do similar sort of stuff I hadn't really thought of it that way you're right they've taken on an identity so they don't know any different do they that's that's it this is who I am and they think that can't be changed is is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. It, the, the words you used couldn't be more pertinent that this is who I am. I don't bake cakes. I I, I, I don't play football. I don't run marathons. These are the, is, these are the sort of words that we hear people use. I, as those. <laughs> I don't run marathons either. <laughs> they, yeah. I love, I love, it, yeah, I love one of the simple things when I'm talking to clients, and I'm sure you've known about this anywhere, is I always say, if you're going to say that, why not put the word yet on the end of it? Yes. And that yet is a presupposition of possibility, and growth is all about possibility. So I don't run marathons yet is absolutely massive because that means at some point you never know, you might run a marathon and that's fine. So I guess what you're saying is we all have the potential for growth and um, development. We just don't know it is that is that right it's not so so much that it's, um, the learning mindset has been suppressed or anything it's just that we just don't know we've got it perhaps we all we all have a learning mindset but i i i believe that our identity and our limiting beliefs 
sometimes squash down that line that uh, that learning mindset mm -hmm. so that so that people won't even consider um stepping out into growth i mean people live in two different places they either live in protection or growth they both know this and people with a fixed mindset tend to live in protection that protection is usually there to keep them safe um to keep them safe from something and whatever that limiting belief might be i'm not good enough People like me don't run marathons. Uh, I can't do this. I can't dance. I can't do public speaking. That will keep people stuck in it. And the sort of work we do, if we do it properly, helps people move from protection to growth. Like I said, and everybody has the potential of having a growth mindset. It's just a case of how you, the stories you tell yourself and how we help them move, you know, overcome that limiting belief, whatever that limiting belief might be for them. Mm. So the fixed mindset then, from what you're saying, is very much about keeping us safe. Is that right? Safe from what? Well, that, that's an interesting question. And that could be very different for everybody, really. Mm. Very different. It's, you know, <clears throat> we go back to anxiety. Anxiety was was first discovered when we had the, um, you know, the fight or flight response system where somebody was facing up to the saber to saber to tiger and they could either fight rather good flight really and for everybody that's safe from what is different it could be safe from being humiliated in class when they were a kid they might have got to you know talked down by somebody and that would stay in their unconscious memory um, it could be safe from making myself like a fool it could be safe from failing it, it, for yeah. everybody, it's that, that 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 protection mode, but the reality of the creating for the self is very real. So, you know, the, the way they're seeing the world and the way they're staying in protection mode, that's a reality they're creating for the self. That's very mm. real. And I, and I love that um, the idea, you know, where it comes from, because I think many people do not realise the impact of early early learnings, if you like. Certainly, I went through a spate of seeing a lot of people who'd had issues at school, not just with teachers, but with, um, you know, uh, classmates or whatever, bullying or whatever. But it it's not always intentional, is it? You know, it's just the person has said something, but it's the individual who has taken it on and decided what it meant is what I got to when I was talking with clients. Would that be your experience too? It can, it can be, I agree. And certainly, yeah, if certainly the two individuals will see the scenario very differently. Mm. Uh, a teacher, I'm sure teachers, I like to think teachers uh, don't, don't, you know, don't really want to uh, make feel make people feel bad about themselves, make them feel small and this sort of thing. Um, certainly not now. I think when we... Yeah, not now. Not now. Yeah. Not so much. But getting back to what you said, yeah, the, the influence... That's why I showed that identity uh, diagram, because the identity we take on is very much driven by our events and what happens and what people tell us and what we take in from other people all the way through our, all the way through our, our lives, really. Yeah. So we, we adopt an identity that really isn't us. You know, that identity isn't really us. It's an identity we've taken on mm. based on all the influences of teachers, friends, family, just about everybody in our in our circle at some point. Yeah, thank you for that because I I absolutely agree with you. So, where does this learning mindset come from, and how can we tap into it? Well, like I said, I believe everybody's got the potential to have a learning mindset. Um, how can we tap into it? I think it's about for me, it's about helping people uh, be a little bit more creative to be a, a little bit more fearless, to be a bit more, yeah, curious. The the one word, word that we can use is just be curious because the word curiosity is so powerful. You know, be curious about how you might do 100 yards run every day this week and then 1,500 yards and then one and a half mile. I'd be curious how you might do that and how that might work for you. Mm. Uh, so there are many ways of tapping into it, but... Um, Small steps, I think, really. 
Yeah, because I, I, you, the language you were using earlier, I can't, I, you know, I can't do this. Um, are, are there any other phrases that would be an indicator of a fixed mindset, which would then enable our listener to recognize when it appears, and then become curious about that? Because I think that's that's really interesting because it's understanding where they've become fixed, and and we all do. I think we ought to tell the listeners. We all become fixed over something because we're too busy yeah, yeah. focusing elsewhere. Fixed, fixed mindset. It's, it's recognizing it, isn't it? It's being able to tackle it. Is there any other phrases that would indicate a fixed mindset that you can recall? Well, there are obviously there are there are lots of them. I can't, I won't, I shan't. All all of these are phrases that pushes basically are telling us are usually linked to a story. You know, everybody's got a story. We hear this, we read this every day, but they usually link to a story where you've come up with that conclusion. Um, one of the th- one of the learnings that I've used, uh, I got from it, actually my mom, my sister's an alcoholic, and in, in AA they they use a technique called flip it. So whenever you right. see a can't, you say just be curious and just flip the can't to can. Flip the shard to shell, you know. So just flip it, and and I know it sounds simple, but just by flipping that that little phrase, you might be curious as to how you might consider even stepping forward towards whatever it might be. I think that's brilliant. I think it's brilliant because it takes a while to catch it, doesn't it? Because uh, habits are one of the things that keeps us exactly where we are in that fixed mindset. I think. But if you can start to be aware of it um, or become or begin to watch for it, you might not catch it until afterwards. But the more you look for it, the more you'll start to see it appearing everywhere. So I think that's really powerful. Thank you for that. The flipping it. Very good. So what's the difference then between a learning mindset and a growth one? Yeah, yeah. That's or a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be honest, it's and that's an interesting choice of phrase. I think a learning mind, a mindset and a growing mindset are pretty much the same. Um, I, I know there's lots of different writings out there. There's lots of different, uh, you can read lots of different stuff on it. Uh, I think they're, they're very, very similar, if not the same. You know, the curiosity of wanting to learn. Mm. We all know that by learning and learning and learning, you you uh, you will move towards growth mm. and what pace is right for you. Yeah, and a, growth, a growth mindset is 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 always looking for opportunity. A growth mindset is is looking for for the positive side of the flip it. It's always they're always looking for you know how can I make this happen? When yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's my opinion. I uh, know, and I I think that's a, a good one. I think if there if there was any way of extending that, I would guess. And I don't think this is quite right, but it's that idea of um, a growth mindset is where you are actively looking to change, whereas learning, you can just do learning for learning's sake, can't you? Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. You know, move on. But a growth one, it sounds more active. Active is the word I'm looking for. Passive yeah. is learning, but active may be growth. Might have to rename my podcast. Drat. <laughs> I like to think that learning will lead to new opportunities because learning creates mm-hmm. curiosity. As we both said, curiosity creates the potential for change. Yes, perfect. So um, I guess the, the, the other thing I, I, I wondered was um, in your experience, and bearing in mind you said you focused around anxiety and addictions, what is happening there regarding the fixed versus learning mindset? Is you know, well, there are lots of there are lots of theories, lots of definitions, lots of um, writing about anxiety, and an awful lot out there in the press. So, my definition of anxiety, just just to share with the way I present it to my clients, really, is anxiety is really the brain continually looping. Asking, asking you, what if, what if, what if, and and anxiety is really, you you know, what if uh, something happens over in Ukraine or whatever that might affect the rest of the world? What if we have a massive flood? What if, what if, what if? Um, and very often, 
it, these what ifs are um are not within our control mm. and not within our control and because we haven't got control then ultimately we continue to keep looping and the, the brain will keep looping what if what if what if we desperately try and get control and we end up with a looping cycle which which as we know can increase the heart rate increase the blood flow to the muscles and we go out very much in protection mode um so just remind me of your question because i've waffled, I've waffled on quite a no, bit no i think that's a good start actually and um, it was a, a very wide sweeping question so you've started and that's really good and and i think if we just look at that what ifs um in my experience the brain is is it needs answers. It needs answers. And if it doesn't get an answer, it comes up with something else. And if that's not right, it comes up with something else and then it comes up with something else. So it's constantly looking for protection. It's making sure that you're safe. And it's just it's just a faulty learning, I guess, isn't it, would you say? Yeah, I, I, I would take that one step further. And what I try mm. and, and, and teach people is, you know, we can't possibly control everything in our lives. You know, I could go out today, cross the road, unfortunately, bang, an accident, and it's good night, Vienna. We we can't control everything in our lives, so we need to get a level of acceptance that we can't always control everything. And very often we can't control whatever's going on in the news. We have very, very limited control. So I think if people can get a level of acceptance that they can't always control everything, then it's not going to be it's not the solution to everything, but it will help them control these negative, anxious thoughts, which which are spiraling away. And as as I call it, it's interesting. I call it standing outside of the headmaster's office when you're oh, a child. Do do explain more. <laughs> uh, I'm sure none of the listeners have done this, but you know. At school, if obviously if you were if you were older, you'd go there and you'd stand outside. You get sent to their master. You'd stand outside, and yet your mind would actually race. Oh my god, this is going to be horrendous. Oh my god, I'm not going to be able to feel my hands for the next three days. Oh my god, this you know I could get detention. I could get. And very often, that's mm-hmm. you racing thoughts, racing anxiety, and you've got no control over any of that. Very often, you go in the headmaster's office, and yet you get chastised. You might even get. Uh, some detention of, but very often the solution is nowhere near as bad as the actual anxious thoughts and anxious feelings really and i think if you can get to that getting back to what i said if you can get to a level of acceptance that you can't always control everything in your life um then it's a much better place to be to deal with anxiety it is a hard one though i did have one client particularly um because i i'm not sure it's, it's a learning thing because the uh, the the, um, the powers that be, you know, the doctors and, you know, scientists and all that are still trying to understand anxiety and, and how, how that can be managed better um, without drugs, let's hope. Um, but you can minimise it, can't you? You can start to reduce it by that sort of thing, getting people to realise when they can control it and when they can't. Is there any other recommendations that you would offer? Because I I see people often talk about anxiety online, and um, certainly my clients mention it when I talk to them. It's 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 not, I wouldn't say prevalent necessarily, but a bit like I said earlier, it's it's becoming more and more because of the 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 nature of the world we're living in. If nothing else, the fast change that we're going through is enough for people to feel like they're not keeping up, which can cause anxiety. Is there anything else, another tip that you might be able to give the viewers who are experiencing anxiety? Because I think beginning to recognise they can't control everything is a good start. But is there another thing that they can do? Um, anxiety itself is not a bad thing. You know, anxiety, we're, we're all anxious for a reason. And it's, as we said, point. it's to keep us safe. So feeling a little bit anxious in certain situations is is okay because there'll be a reason behind that and it might be to keep us safe one of the things i share with my clients which you might resonate with which the 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 listeners are going to either love this i hate this but this is my belief and it does it does help um, me and hopefully some of my clients so so we create our own reality so we look look out through our own eyes we take information in we're continually taking information information in we're pattern matching it against as I said earlier on, all the 
all the things that have happened through your life, right the way from very early age, right the way through to the to today, even really. Right. So we're, we're continually creating a reality. Very often, that reality isn't real. And that's what anxiety does. It makes us create a reality that's not real. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the what ifs come from. That reality does isn't real. It's a, it's a reality we create for ourselves. So I would say to people, and again, it, there is no one solution that's going to work for everyone. But ask yourself, when you're in the midst of that anxiety, is this reality I'm creating for myself real? You know, is this reality I'm going to walk in the headmaster's office and not be able to feel my hands for the next three days and, and end up with, you know, two weeks to ten. Is that real? Of course it isn't. It hasn't happened. So is this reality real? No, it isn't. How would I choose to feel? How would I choose to feel? And that that will at least help pattern interrupt the way that you're thinking at the time. Yeah. Again, will it fix for, will it work for everyone? Of course not. Is it a solution to everything? No. But there will be times when it certainly will help. And it, all behavior has a purpose. If you can pattern interrupt that behavior, which is what anxiety is, it's a behavior. If you can pattern interrupt it, then you have a chance of uh, of curtailing that behavior and helping you think and feel differently about the situation. Yeah, I love that. There's a whole different conversation in there as well. But conscious of your time, Rob, which I do appreciate you giving up for today. So um, just to bring this to a close, I think what you've said here today has been very powerful in terms of understanding more about the mind, um, the fact that there's a fixed mindset and a learning mindset, that we have the ability to recognise our fixed mindset now by the I can't, I should, I must, whatever, and then being able to become curious to get us over to the more learning mind or growth mindset, as as you've mentioned. I love the fact that you um, are talking here about, um, you know, uh, what, where this has all come from. So one of the questions I didn't ask you, and we'll just squidge in, how can we develop that or encourage that learning mind, not just in organisations, but, you know, around us? Because let's face it, some of our family, God love them, <laughs> may be fixed. Well, I... I've got to go back really to back to basics, back to what we said at the beginning of this um, this recording and so forth. Because I, when when I when I do find people who are are rigid in that um, in that fixed mindset, and that's like you said, we've all got brothers, sisters, loved ones who might be. I always go back to just be curious, just be curious, just be curious how different it might feel if you just try doing things different. And it's a small world, it's a small word, but it's so positive, really. And that, that that works for me. Perfect. And then just to wrap up, if there's one thing that you could say that could help people move even more from a fixed to a learning mindset, what might that be? Yeah, um, I'm a big lover of Mr. Clear, James. Oh, Mr. Clear, yeah. Uh, if you haven't heard of him, you really do need to hear from him. Unbelievably fantastic author, wrote this book called Atomic Habits, Habits are really what drive our behaviour. Uh, if you haven't read it, read this book. This this really will help you. I can't I can't commendend it enough. It's just a brilliant book. So that one thing, if you get a chance to read it, read Atomic Habits. It's a, it's a life changing book. Fantastic. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, and lovely to uh, see you again. And for the insights that you've given us today, um, is there any way that people can contact you should they need to? Yeah, that's great, Kim. Thanks for that. So obviously, I've got a website. Um, if you go, if you Google uh, Rob Donnelly uh, therapy, I'm sure it'll come up with me. You can have a look on the website, and there's a contact form on the website. They can drop me an email via that. That'd be great. Thanks, okay. Kim. I will put those details in the text be below when, where I put this, so um, people can still still get access to it easier. Sometimes they'll just go straight in. So I'm not saying you'll suddenly get bombarded, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much and thank you uh listener for tuning in today um to the podcast learning mind thank you